My name's Leo Ford. I go by Bud Ford. Uh, I think they should have had this a little uh, closer to uh, Halloween because we would have got a better turnout because most of the people are ghosts. Uh, there's not very many of us left. Uh, I was in Operation Hardtack. It was in the Pacific in 1958. Uh, we were told that we were going to the Marshall Islands to witness a couple of atomic bomb tests and then take a world cruise and uh, end up on the East Coast. Well, it uh, wasn't quite true. Uh, we were there for nine months and uh, in the Marshall Islands. And at, during that time, I went through, it was over 28 shots. Um, some of the, and we had, uh, we had no place for liberty. We had every fourth week, we could uh, go out to a little island called Nanatal and uh, drink beer and get in fights with each other. Um, <clears throat> the first shots that they shot off was launched from the ship I was on, it was a Boxer aircraft carrier, CVS-21. They were launched by balloons. They used a they were about uh, nah, maybe 18 inches in diameter, about 30 feet long, and they launched them with huge uh, helium balloons. And uh, we would shut down everything on the ship as that no frequencies would set these off. And they were, by the time they set them off, uh, it was a little scary because we didn't know whether they were going to explode right on the deck or not. Uh, they uh, by the time they went set them off, they were pretty far off, mostly just we saw was a flash. And as the test progressed, uh, they kept getting closer and closer and closer. All the shots were named after trees. And uh, <clears throat> one of the shots I was involved in was, uh, I think it was called Yellowwood. It was on a working party on an LCM that uh, we took a bunch of silicone sand around the, the bombs on a barge. And uh, we didn't really have backed off that far, I guess, because when they set that one off, I happened to, couldn't watch it. We couldn't, we had no dark glasses. Uh, but I peeked up over the edge at the wrong time and caught a bunch of shrapnel in my face. Mostly it was like little BBs of uh, melted sand and a piece of steel in my neck and my lip. They took me over on the island and patched me up, and, uh, and uh, the guy looked at me and he said, I haven't seen anything like this since Korea. But um, <clears throat> as we kept getting closer, and they kept getting closer, and they could, sometimes they would tell us when they were going to set one off. Sometimes it was like wartime conditions that uh, all hands, man, your battle stations, this is not a drill. So we didn't know exactly what to expect, and uh, sometimes we did. They tried to tell us. Um, I just hit on some of the bigger ones. Uh, one of the shots was called the uh, umbrella shot. It was an underwater shot. Um, the, uh, I was on deck for that one. I was on the aircraft carrier, and we were sitting sideways to it. And uh, when it went off, uh, at the, at the surface raised and then it broke through and uh, the target ship broke in half and went spinning through the air. Two little ripples came across the water, looked like they were six inches tall, but that ship rolled at, 40, at 30, 39 degrees. And uh, I thought we were going over uh, the, um, I didn't know that I was gonna be trapped under it or damage control people said one more degree and she would have went. Well, all the power went off on the ship. There was, even the battle lanterns didn't come on. And the guys that were down below were in complete darkness. And the water from the shafts was throwing water on them and they thought where they were going down. So there was quite a bit of panic in the engine rooms and the boiler rooms. And the next shot we did was an underwater one, but they wouldn't go back and I was assigned to go down but they hit that one straight on so we didn't have that much trouble. 
the uh, five inch hanger deck, steel hanger deck would crinkle like a piece of tin foil on that ship. Um, the big one that he was talking about, I think maybe this was in 58 though, it was in uh, An uh, Anawitog, it's called Oak Shot. Uh, we evacuated everybody off of the oak, off the uh, island, uh, and we talk. And one guy told me, he said, there's still natives out there on those islands. And uh, he told the commanding officer, I ah, hell with them. He said, by the time they, when they did take them off, they were so radiated they couldn't walk. So not all the natives got off the islands. Uh, the other big ones was uh, we went to uh, Johnson Islands and uh, shot off uh, with Redstone guided missiles. Uh, that was called a teak shot. Um, it was at midnight. There was, um, uh, we had to go on deck, white uniforms, suntan oil, it was, um, we made our own with baby oil and uh, iodine. We were all pretty well tanned because we'd been over there for about, oh, I think about eight months. And, and uh, when, they, when they shot that one off, it was at midnight. And it was so bright, when you covered with the back turn, covering your arms, we had no dark glasses. We had, you could see the bones in your arms. People that were sitting there looking at the people lined up on deck said it looked like a row of skeletons with, with their, they had dark, they had the, the goggles. But there was quite a bit of panic. There was like burns. I got like a sunburn on my neck and arms and, and through my whites. And uh, there was panic. There was people screaming, running. There were some people who went blind from looking at the flash. We put out the power in Hawaii, EMP, the electronic magnetic pulse, put out the power in uh, uh, Hawaii, 700 miles away for eight hours. So with, that was in 58. So you take the stuff they got now with the EMP and they set it off here on the coast, you might as well throw away every bit of your computers, all your cell phones, because they're done they're through. You have no power. You will have no food. You will have no water. And that is what is very scary right now because you got people like North Korea and like Iran that don't care about how many people they kill. If we bomb them, they don't care. <clears throat> so is there anybody here that uh, was on the boxer? Anybody here, I know you were, that was in Operation Hardtack? <laughs> it was. So that was the, most of my experience. We, the discipline on the ship was terrible because nobody cared if they did what they did because you might get sent home. <laughs> Maybe you'd get out of the Navy, but you'd get sent home. When I re-enlisted, when they brought the ship back, we are a pretty rowdy crew. They, uh, they didn't appreciate us in Hawaii at all. If you was off the boxer and you went over, they had the, what they called the uh, HASP, the Hawaiian Armed Service Police. And uh, we had made such a bad reputation when we hit and we talked because the crew tore down the EM club. But uh, when we went to Hawaii, the first batch went over on Liberty, but most of them didn't come back until the shore patrol bought them back because they were all in jail. The, Ar the Ar armed service police, the Hawaiian armed service police, had orders to pick up anybody with a boxer patch and take them to jail. I don't care if you're standing in line to go to a movie, you went to jail. And you didn't get out of jail until the next morning when the shore patrol came and got you. But uh, so we, we had kind of a bad reputation on our ship. Uh, so we weren't very well received there in Hawaii either. So. 
Anyway, when I got out, they broke up the crew and they sent us to different ships and I went to the Kearsarge. And I had a few months to go before my enlistment and uh, uh, the command, it was a warrant, chief warrant officer, Rubenspice, that was giving my shipping over lecture. And uh, he um, said, look at my record, and he said, you got a good record here, you're going up for second class and you're, you've already taken the test, but you can find a place for you. And uh, I looked at him and I said, as long as there's any chance I might get sent over on the test, I'm not shipping over. And he said, I don't blame you a damn bit, that was a hell ship. And he closed the books and that was, that was it. I was, I was through. <laughs> That was my shipping over lecture. <laughs> so that's my experience in the atomic bomb test. When we set off the big one over in, uh, on Johnson Islands, there was actually, we set two of them off with missiles, but uh, we were uh, invited all the countries to come and witness it. We had, uh, the Russians come aboard our ship and film the shots. And uh, later on, from the helicopter, one of the helicopter squadrons, a Marine that was in a crash there at, uh, on our ship, was trying to find uh, some medical records for getting some disability. And he said there was Russian ships, Russian submarines out there watching every one of those shots. He said, we saw them from our helicopters. We had radio in back. And, and the bombers would go out and buzz them a couple of times and they had to sing. But we were sworn to secrecy, $10,000 fine or 10 years in prison, if we even talked about it. We could not even tell our doctors, our physicians, or anything about it. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, you know, I thought it was over security, but it wasn't. It's a cover-up on the, the health of the participants in the atomic bomb test. We were released from that uh, in uh, 1996, and all kinds of stories were starting to come out. I had a tumor taken out of me uh, the size of a lemon between my lung and my rib called a swanoma tumor, and it's caused by ionized radiation. I have nodules in my th uh, thyroids that I have to get taken care of every year. But uh, the, the whole thing, I, I can never get any disability because you have to have cancer before you get disability. Um, so we're looking back on everything and all the people I talked to, I'm the California commander of the National Association of Atomic Vets. So I have a lot of people call me and tell me their stories and uh, it looks like uh, it's just been a whole cover-up on the, on the health problems with the atomic weapons. So we would, that's why we would like to see the banding completely of atomic weapons in all countries. <laughs> that's about all I got to say. Thank you, Steph.